This is News at 8. Good evening and welcome to the Primetime News Bulletin here on the Joy News Channel. Tonight, striking doctors and government engage in media war over ongoing strike with each of the parties justifying their stance on the matter. The strike, meanwhile, is taking a toll on the few government hospitals that are attending to patients. Final year students disappointed their school failed to register them for the ongoing WASI exams go on rampage. Court dismisses motion by the Electoral Commission to delay filing of its affidavits in landmark election petition case. And Board of National Service Secretariat takes on its director for what it describes as its frustrations with its conduct. All these plus showbiz sports and business coming up in the next hour. News at 8 with Israel Lai. In our very first story, government has denounced the ongoing strike by members of the Ghana Medical Association as illegal, unfounded, and insensitive. It also describes as false claims in the media by doctors that government is refusing to abide by the ruling of the National Labor Commission. A statement signed by the Minister of Information and Media Relations, Mama Yarga, observed what government describes as a distortion of facts and issues the GMA was bringing on the table for discussions cannot be allowed to continue, especially when members of the GMA working in government hospitals have been regularly paid their salaries. The presidency in the statement also directed the Ministry of Health to ensure all, that all previously announced remedial measures are fully activated and implemented to guarantee the citizenry a right to proper medical care during the period that the doctors remain on their illegal unfounded and insensitive strikes so as to avoid the death of innocent Ghanaians even as the doctors continue to draw on their salaries. NHIS cardholders are meanwhile being asked to access health facilities at the various private and mission hospitals and clinics. But the Ghana Medical Association has quickly rebutted government's claims that its strike is illegal. According to the GMA, government was the first to flout the National Labor Commission ruling given on November 4, 2011, as was indicated in the decision of the NLC on February 2013. In a press statement signed by General Secretary Dr. Frank Srebo, the GMA is asking the general public to ignore the, quote, propaganda from government and urged all doctors to continue with the fight to ensure the anomalies in pension contributions and the market premium payments are corrected. In another statement, the government and hospital pharmacists is blaming the posture of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission for the recurrent labor agitations. Now, the statement reads, quote, the uncompromising posture of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission over the last two years, coupled with their disregard for rulings, directives, orders, and decisions of the NLC, have led to most of the present labor agitations and unrest in this country, unquote. The statement signed by its president James Oheming Che is therefore calling on government to quote cause an immediate implementation of all rulings by the NLC and also call an immediate industrial ceasefire on all the labor agitations in the country and set up an independent mediator to promptly hear all parties and resolve all outstanding issues. Now, in a related development, Minister of Interior Kwesi Ahoy has, has urged the Ministry of Health to adopt emergency preparedness strategies in hospitals across the country to avert a collapse of the health delivery system as a result of the strike by a section of workers in the health sector. He was addressing the media on day two of a tour of health facilities by the health ministry. The tour, led by the minister, took the officials to the police hospital, which since yesterday has been railing under pressure as patients flocked there having been denied care at the other government hospitals. 
The situation had forced officials to set up two mobile clinics to cater for the increasing number of patients. They appealed for assistance from the ministry so they could better contain the pressure. Sector Minister Sherry Aite assured the hospital the ministry will accede to the request. Interior Minister Kwesi Ahoy says it was important the health workers' concerns are dealt with. It's very unfortunate that we have this development on our hands much and I want to assure you that my ministry, the IGP and my colleague Minister for Health and indeed representing the government will use this opportunity to solve this problem once and for all. I think Ghanaians should say we are tired of, of the strike every day, doctors going on strike. We should solve the problem at its fundamentals and so that it will not be a repetitive life that we'll be living all our lives in this country. The entourage also visited the Kolebu Teaching Hospital where patients at the maternity emergency ward complained they were not being attended to in good time. Acting Chief Executive Professor Ifo Hese explained. In this instance, because the doctors are not um, attending to outpatients, what is happening is the, the pregnant women will be triaged. That means they will be ex first examined by the nurses. Anyone who has an emergency or is in labor who then needs to be seen by a doctor will then be seen by a doctor. So it's taking a little bit longer than it normally does because to help in the triage, you'd have the junior doctors as well as the middle level doctors, the residents. So it's taking them a bit longer. That's why a few of them were complaining about having been there for a long time. The situation is not very easy. And we as managers can only pray that a solution will be found quickly so that both the pharmacists as well as the doctors can return. The doctor strike has meanwhile entered into its third day. Elsewhere, final year students of the college senior high school at Dakuman here in Accra today went on the rampage, destroying school property, running into several thousands of Ghana cities over the authorities' failure to register them for the ongoing West African senior high school examination. There are about 195 students who say they paid between 110 and 180 Ghana cities are calling for the heads of both the director and headmaster, as well as a refund of their exam fees and all monies paid to the school for the time they've been there. No part of the school was spared. Windows were broken, computers and air conditioners destroyed, school documents littered the floor and in the middle of the school compound. The charred remains of the director's vehicle bent beyond recognition. It took a team of police personnel from both the Dakuman and Odoko Divisional Police Headquarters to salvage the situation. A route control vehicle was stationed at the entrance of the school to prevent the students from engaging in further vandalism. The students and their relations will, however, not be intimidated. For them, it was unimaginable that four long years of schooling had come to naught. But I've been school four years. Where the school fees are? And now, at two years, I'm still going to have a cup of No more coffee. Where the scanning is? Where the seven point five? Where the bill seven point five? Two hundred people. What that that one is? The Sunday. Sunday, you're back. This man told us he has, he has registered us. We, f we filled the form. He took us pictures. That shows that we are going to write. He took our registration fee, our school fees. 5.3. 5.3. Everyone has a cause that he or she is offering. And everyone is paying different, different, different kind of money. One, someone is paying 1.8, 1.7. I paid 1.7 for the registration fee. That's what, that is what I paid. And you are telling me you register me. 
all our forms that we filled, we filled are inside the office. He didn't send them. Why? He told us to pay our registration fee earlier, and we did, we did all that. And we were waiting for our index number. And all the time we have been tossing us that, oh, we will write out for the WASI there, we will write. See, but we, we have been waiting, we have been waiting. So nothing is showing. See, nothing is showing. We, we were hoping that last Friday, we were hoping that by Friday we will get our index number, everything, so that we can have a peace of mind and take our book and learn. But from, from, from that Friday, we didn't see anything. One parent told the news team he had information the school had been disrecognized by the West African Examination Council. In 2007, there was a problem between the school and GES, and it was solved. And now they have to, they have to be given a letter to go to WIEC for them to write. They started as remedial class. So in 2007, officially, they were asked to write um, how do I call it? WIEC. So the problem also rise again in 2009. They had a, a serious challenge in 2009, but Mercy located them and they wrote. And in 2011, some of the students wrote their examination um, from Accra High. The students for now are frustrated and clueless as to what to do next. So right now we are demanding for our money. They should pay us our money. We want our money, all our money. Since from Form 1 to Form 4, we need all our money. Because you can't be in this country without, without educating. Without educating. So we need, we, need the, we need the government to do something about that. The director of the school has been taken for questioning by the police. Meanwhile, Albert Cornelius, headmaster of the school, has disclosed to join news that the school made a formal complaint to the police on the matter. He admitted that the 195 students have paid the exam registration fees, but due to a long-standing dispute with WIAC, they have been prevented from writing the exams. Albert Cornelius said the school's issue with WIAC started in 2011 when the examination authority accused them of registering students who were not their bona fide property. He explained that WIAC begged the court to settle the issue out of court, paving the way for the students of the 2012 back to write the exams last minute. But public relations officer of WIAC, Agnes Tekujo, said the school faulted for registering unqualified, was faulted for registering unqualified students and as such was de-recognized and slapped with a three-year ban not to present candidates for future examinations. She wondered why the school would go ahead to take them examination fees from the students when they have been de-recognized. Uh, information also reaching your news indicates parents of uh, the students of college senior high school are preparing a legal action against the director of the school atu abraham by the close of the week and we'll bring you an update on that as and when it becomes available in other news the executive director of the national service scheme uh, vincent kwangwen who has come on the fire from members of his own board over what they describe as their frustrations with his conduct a member of the board, Dr. David Percy, told Joy News, Quagben, Mr. Quagben, who has over the four years taken unilateral decisions without the express authority from the board. He was elaborating on a statement issued by the board. He cited the controversial decision by Mr. Quagbenu to draft graduates from the tertiary institutions into the direction of traffic. According to him, Mr. Quagbenu did not consult them before rolling out the new policy. He said even though it was the idea of the board to expand the farm project currently being run by the scheme and one of the flagships of the scheme, Mr. Kwagbenu has failed to update the board on the performance of the project so far. He said all they hear is that 15 farms have been set up so far, but they have no clue where the farms are cited. He said all actions by the board to check the activities by the NSS boards have been futile. Meanwhile, Vincent Kwagbenu has questioned the authenticity of the statement issued by the board. In a text message in response to requests for his reaction, he said, Please, I am a member of the board of the Ghana National Service Scheme. I am not aware of any statement to the media. I am unable to comment on a statement that I cannot authenticate the true source. We're taking a break now, but there's more news coming up. Don't go away. The Supreme Court has dismissed the motion filed by the Electoral Commission, the second respondent in the presidential election petition, which prayed the court to begin the trial so it could provide its affidavits later. 
Now, a former minister in the Eswal Kufu administration, Ya Osafumaf, was asking for compensation for the from the family of Isa Mobila, the former Northern Regional Chairman of the PNC, who died after he was brutalized by some soldiers. He says, though the courts have finally ruled on the matter, justice alone in this instance is not enough. Ya Osafumaf was speaking to Joy News at the inauguration of the Justice and Peace Foundation in Accra. of the MPP, including the wife of the flag bearer, Rebecca Ekufuadu, in attendance. Delivering a lecture on the topic, Justice, the Foundation for Peace, Yao Osafumafo reiterated there can be no peace when the human cravings and yearnings to right the wrongs in society have not been satisfied. The social cultural behavior of Ghanaians sometimes seems to ignore justice to the individuals or group of individuals and lays emphasis on peace. As a result of this syndrome, in many homes, even when individuals have wronged others or elders, are urged to sweep injustice and ask the younger ones to acquiesce because the other one is older than you. This creates a problem. He recounted incidents in the 2012 elections where some persons were brutalized, yet justice was yet to prevail. In order to do constituency, Ghanaians were beaten up for offering themselves to register in accordance with the law. And we know what happened to our Honorable Ms. Asla Ousu. She got and reported the matter to the police. There were pictures of those who were beating her up in a couple of papers, and you could identify the people who were being the beating. To date, to date, Nobody has been apprehended. Yao Osafumafo singled out the Isa Mobila case as one incident. If the family of Isa Mobila, the wife, they loses a husband, then you sentence somebody in imprisonment. Yes, that is national justice. But he, the breadwinner of his family was Isa Mobila. He died in the cells of the police, which is a government institution. So you must also take steps to provide some compensation for the wife and the children. They've not perhaps gone to court to seek redress, but if they go, they will surely win. But we don't have to wait for them to go to court. We must do it as a matter of According to duty. him, the MPP's legal challenge of the election results and the landmark Supreme Court ruling that would emerge would set the right precedence for the conduct of future elections vis-a-vis -vis the Electoral Commission's impartial refereeing role. The Ghana Bar Association is asking the media to be circumspect and not prejudge when reporting on court cases to avoid contempt. The association has also called on court reporters to always cross-check and review legal stories with lawyers before publication. As a forum organized in conjunction with the GJO Media and Law, the national president of the Ghana Bar Association, Nene Amegache, bemoaned how court proceedings and facts in some legal cases are misreported by the media. Sometimes their stories are taken from the papers and the way they are reported, not that uh, this is, uh, but they are reported as if that is the truth. That is the truth we know as a fact. You, there is a defamatory statement. And then you take the defamatory statement and then you start spreading it. You cannot run away from liability. You cannot absolve absorb yourself. And it is important that when we are taking stories from other publications, other papers, we ought, it is our responsibility to check, especially where you are not sure. The association's National Public Relations Officer, Anthony Forson, also asked court reporters to be discreet in their reportage. Publishing any material uh, which is pending before a court, you must be extremely circumspect in not prejudging. Because the moment you make any statement which has the tendency or is likely to interfere with fair trial, you are in for contempt. So my brief advice relating to this is that as much as possible, the media houses must have uh, uh, lawyers who clear um, stories which have a sensitive nature. That is very important. That is For the outgoing General Secretary of the Ghana Journalist Association, Brad Blewu, 
the passage of the broadcasting law was the way out. Even empaneling that a broadcasting law will say this is the way to do it in, in, in order that we integrate this country. You don't go and bring uh, some hostile person to, you know, to just come and spew. So all these things are important in a broadcasting law. It should be peculiar to us. We as a country have now recognized our challenges. We have to sit down and indeed we have a blueprint so that we can, we can, we can, we can develop the industry professionally and make it effective rather than what, what we see, uh, some jungle, this thing beginning to emerge in certain areas. People, even the question of ownership, the question of allocation of frequency, it all has to be part of a broadcasting law so that everything is clear, so that when you make a mistake, there's a law we can refer to. The Editors Forum Ghana, meanwhile, intends to host such dialogues in ensuing days to ensure the media is fully prepared to report on emerging court cases which are of national interest. Five deputy ministers designated, including former Deputy Information Minister Samuel Ukujetu Ablakwa and member of government communication team Felix Kwachofusu, today appeared before Parliament Appointment Committee. The nominees were taken through a series of interrogations to determine their eligibility for the positions. First to be voted was Dominic Akuritinga Ayini, Deputy Minister designate for the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's Department. He was followed by Barbara Sewa Asamwa, Deputy Minister designate Lands and Natural Resources. The Deputy Minister designate for the Education Ministry, Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa, was the next to take the seat. In his answer to a question asked by a member of the appointment committee, Baba Jamal, on his alleged acquisition of a chain of properties, both in and outside the country, he described them as fabrications to tarnish his image. He also shared his thoughts about the strikes in the education sector. Uh, with the, the, also the, resources, the financial resources, the president himself has said that we are now down to the bone. The finance minister has also indicated that um, uh, we may have to borrow if we want to pay uh, uh, arrears at, at the lump sum without uh, installment. So we must begin looking at many other things. The district assemblies can even every quarter hold special you know, uh, awards or recognition sessions for teachers in their districts, especially the deprived districts, to just show recognition, to just show that kind of respect and uh, appreciation which should come with uh, the very uh, noble task of, of teaching and preparing a generation for the future. So uh, I believe that this would be my uh, humble advice to my minister. The deputy minister designate for the Ministry of Information and Media Relations, Felix Kwachi Ofosu, also took his turn. The deputy minister of finance designate, Kesio Atuba Forsen, highlighted some significant savings to government following the implementation of the biometric payroll system which aims to expunge ghost names. So if I become the, the Deputy Minister nominee, I will assist my minister so that we can intensify the issue of registration. And occasionally, what we will do is to review the registration. Because somebody can register today, and then tomorrow is no more. And somebody will end up collecting the same salary and will not provide the information. We live in a country that people die and do not even register uh, at the death, um, um, birth and death registry. So it's very difficult for you to get information back and to use the information for decision making. Another set of five nominees will be vetted tomorrow. Uh, the Electoral Commission has fixed Tuesday, April 30, 2013, for the Kumbungu constituency by election in accordance with Article 112, Subsection 5 of the 1992 Constitution. A statement signed by Dr. Kujua Farajan, EC Chairman on Wednesday, said the by election has been necessitated by the resignation of Al Haji Mohamed Mumuni, Member of Parliament for the Kumbungu constituency in the Kumbungu district of the northern region. The EC explained that the commission will take nominations from the said by-election on Tuesday, April 16, and Wednesday, April 17, at the district office of the commission at Kumbungu District Assembly from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and then 1.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. The statement said nomination forms may be obtained from the district office of the commission at Kumbungu or at the regional office of the commission in Tamale. 
Candidates for the election shall provide two written photographs with a red background on the submission of their nomination forms. The filing fee for the election is 1,000 Ghana CDs. The former MP for Kumbungu, Mohamed Mumuni, is now the Secretary General of the African, Caribbean and Pacific Group of States. Irish youth at Sepase in the Chuman Gwabiaja district of the Shanti region today clashed with police as they blocked the Kumasi Bibiani Road in protest of persistent accidents in the town. Wednesday morning's incident followed the injury of a seven year old pupil of the local Roman Catholic primary school was knocked down by a speeding vehicle. Police had to fire warning shots and tear gas to disperse the rampaging crowd. Ashanti regional correspondent Mohamed Mooney reports. The irate youth mounted roadblocks to disrupt vehicular movement and demanded immediate action from authorities to erect speed ramps on the stretch of the road to prevent further carnage. It took a timely intervention of police personnel to prevent a nasty situation. According to residents, many accidents have occurred in the town, resulting in casualties. Just this year, three deaths have been recorded as a result of overspeeding vehicles. They say repeated calls to the district assembly for speed ramps have gone unheeded. They therefore decided to take the law into their hands to demand action. The district assembly has been given one week to meet their demands or face further demonstrations. Some residents shared their grievances. I said to school boy, crossed the road and the car was not, not done by him. In fact, it was a very sad situation. This has been going on, going on several times. In fact, the boys, in fact, the boys gathered themselves to do something to, to block to block the road. We need a speed run within short time. Within a short time, yes, it will be more than what we did today. Assemblyman of the area, Elder Joseph Abwaje, assures residents the matter will receive urgent attention. I'm giving you assurance that by the end of this week, everything will be successful. I've made attempt more than two times, but this one is very serious, so I will try my best to finish uh, the, the bombing. Meanwhile, our correspondent who covered the incident was restrained by Ebuaka police to take footages for no apparent reason. The security personnel seized his camera and deleted the visuals before returning it to him. Up next, we bring you business news. Join News Business was brought to you in association with Maximum. Your world of maximum possibilities. The country's key business leaders are complaining about the cost of doing business with the cost of borrowing. Currently at 23% mentioned as one of the key factors impacting on the operations, highlighting their challenges. At a forum organized by the Ghana Chamber of Commerce, the business executives said governments will have to pay critical attention to their difficulties. The meeting under the theme, moving from lower middle income to upper middle income, the role of the private sector, was meant to provide an open forum for the business leaders to pour over their challenges. Whilst they did not hesitate to speak their minds, one of the speakers, the chief executive of Stambik, Al Hassan Andani attributed their difficulties to attitudes towards the local currency by the same businesses and in discipline in financial management. Interest rate can be used to control the cost of doing business. Uh, uh, the banks are giving us reasons as to why they have to charge us high rates. And as CEOs here, we all know that we're, we're not, our businesses are not healthy. And we shouldn't just accept the fact that this thing has been existing in Ghana for a while. It's not in my place to make those calls, but it's in my place as a rational manager of people's resources to make the right choices so my shareholders can keep me in a job. Your own CD is not what you operate with. You operate with a US dollar, which you don't control. That is our attitude towards our own local currency. If you cannot protect your local currency, you cannot protect your capital. The issue of forex usage in this country, I think the biggest culprit is the government. 
Every Monday, the rate changes at the port. You sell one thing, and you do another. Other issues highlighted as mitigating against business were infrastructure, utilities, tax burden, and access to credit. These members of the chamber resolved to engage government in a dispassionate discussion. What we see now, media war, power struggle, power play. People get the power just to suppress private man. When you are trying to register your product, instead of 15 days, it takes about three months. Otherwise, you have to pay something. Everywhere you go within the ministries, the private person is struggling. What we are facing right now, Ghanaians, at this point in time today, there's lack of business confidence. They are not sure that we... We are looking forward to a period where the business environment in Ghana will be characterized by easy access to credit, reliable supply of utilities, at competitive prices, quality infrastructure, I was late today because the road wasn't too good, and a more equitable distribution of the tax burden, not by piling it on us that are registered and already in the tax net, but by the enlargement of the tax net. Trade and Industry Minister Haruna Idrisu was not present to speak to the issues raised but his representative said the private sector advisory council and the public-private partnership policy which have been instituted will take up the concerns taking into consideration all the issues raised. The Ghanaian economy is estimated to be worth 73.1 million Ghana cities as at the end of 2012 having grown by 7.9% over the period. This is according to revised figures released by the Ghana Statistical Service. The inflation rate for March, meanwhile, went up marginally to 10.4%. The March inflation rate is a 0.4% increase in the figure for the previous month, an indication the rate at which prices of goods and services went up rose slightly. Food inflation in particular went up by 0.2% to 5.5%, but not as high as the non-food inflation rate, which stood at more than 13%. To have positive inflation, it means prices are increasing. But it is the rate at which they are increasing is what concerns policymakers and decision makers, and even the individual person on the market. Because if you know, even if you are a trader, and you know that prices are increasing so fast. What it means that you cannot plan with the income. But if you know prices are increasing very slowly, then the money you, you have, you take your time and plan before you make any purchases. But upon four increase, it's not a panic situation, which should force people to make panic uh, uh, purchases. The revised economic growth for 2012 of 7.9% meanwhile falls short of the 9% projected by government. The service sector, which is still the largest, with a GDP contribution of 50%, recorded the highest growth of 10.2%. The Statistical Service has meanwhile postponed the use of a revised basket of goods in the computation of inflation. The rebased inflation rate was supposed to have been announced today, but Joy Business has gathered that postponement has been influenced by some challenges in collating data gathered across the country by officers of the Statistical Service. It is hoped the review will better reflect movements in the prices of goods and services, especially in light of criticism that the current inflation rates are not a fair assessment of what pertains on the market. Acting government statistician Philomena Nyako, however, says the service is unable to say whether the rebasing will lead to an increase or decrease in inflation. As you know, the weights have changed based on the 2006 GLSS uh, household uh, survey that we conducted and then we are also looking at uh, the components of the basket. The basket, the number of items used to be 242, now it has increased to 267. And so, depending on the weight of each of these items, we might see an increase in the inflation rate or not.
Junior. Let's uh, stay in the world of soccer. And former defender Habib Mohammed has signed for Iraqi top flight side Al Talaba after a failed move to play for Ghana Premier League side Berkum Chelsea. The left back, who spent much of his time at club sites in Norway and Turkey, has been speaking on live in Iraq as a professional player. Habib Mohammed played at the 2006 FIFA World Cup in Germany but failed to keep up momentum afterwards. We now do the Champions League and the tussle for places in the semi-final is definitely over. Two clubs from Spain, two clubs from Germany. Let's look at how the action panned out tonight. Barcelona obviously coming into this game with a 2-2 advantage because they have played away. Drew one all with Paris Saint-Germain at the Camp Nou. Pastore got the goal for Paris Saint-Germain and the man Rodriguez got the goal for Barcelona. But for a long time, Messi didn't start for Barcelona in the first half. He came on during the second half. So Barcelona over there making sure they're into the next stage of the competition. There was another game in Italy. Juventus had to try and overturn a result because they lost in the first leg by two goals to nil. It didn't work out for them. Bayern Munich managed to beat them by two goals to nil at home. Bayern Munich finished on the tie, four goals to nil on aggregate. Wonderful goals scored by Mandzuzic as well as Pizarro. So we have four teams in the semi-final and this time out we do not know who is playing who because there's going to be another draw for those four teams. So two teams in Spain is Real Madrid and Barcelona in the semi-final and two teams in Germany is Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. Very exciting times in Champions League and we'll be looking forward to everything that happens there. That'll be all for sports tonight. My name is George Adi Jr. Do you have a good night? Israel will join us with Showbiz. Sports was brought to you in association. All right, so in our final uh, comment or wrap up, uh, we're going to our, our social media and going to what you have posted on Facebook uh, this evening. Kwame Ansa says, I'm pleading with our dear doctors to please have a second look at us, that is, we the poor, and return to the various theaters. Uh, Peter. Uh, by uh, Daga says, doctors go to work, your rewards are in heaven just like teachers. Yusuf Nuruddin says, the future of these students by no fault of theirs has been toyed with by the school authorities and if there is a mechanism that can be put in place for them to write the exams, then it should be done. The school authorities must be penalized. If the doctor's strike is illegal, then let our laws function. And then Jessica Etonam says, what about the university lecturers? And uh, Musa Abatua Kumasi says, listening to the GMA boss, you get the sense that these doctors are full of greed. What is so satisfying and saving human lives? Now the judiciary is next uh, MPP on my mind. So those are all the columns you, are, you have sent in. And uh, that's it for the bulletin. Before we go, a quick run through our top stories. Striking doctors and governments have been engaged in a media war of ongoing strike. With each of the parties justifying their stance on the matter. The strike, meanwhile, is taking a toll on the few government hospitals that are attending to patients. Final year students disappointed their school failed to register them for the ongoing WASI exams have gone on rampage, destroying school property. The Supreme Court has dismissed a motion filed by the Electoral Commission to delay filing of its affidavits in the landmark election petition case. And the Board of the National Service Secretariat is taking on its executive director for what it describes as its frustrations with its conduct. And that's it for the bulletin. My name is Israel I. PM Express is up next. Stay tuned.